Do you think, and you've just alluded to the fact that all the money was coming from CPA centrally and Bremo and the huge vote that, that he got from Congress. And of course the Iraqi funds. From yes, oil. all revenue. So, yes. But do you think that, that right from the start, Britain's tentativeness about the whole thing was, was recognisable in terms of the scale of investment that Britain was prepared to put in, both financial for aid projects and troop levels? Um, difficult for me to judge because I never really did the sums. Um, were, were the troop levels proportionately smaller than the American troop levels, which was of course an unsuccessful invasion light? The invasion was successful, but the post-conflict light, if you like. I, um, I would have thought that the balance was probably uh, Britain produced possibly more than the Americans. Financially, again, I didn't do the sums, but you know. The scale of the two economies is absolutely disproportionate. And the need, certainly it seemed from my perspective, was almost infinite. So although the development ministry did produce funds, and a lot of work was done in refurbishing the university and schools and so on, um, whatever the British government might have produced would not have been enough. And we needed big money from the Americans. That meant we had to convince the Americans that we were going to spend it well, which was another another issue. So I've not done the sums, um, but I think the British government, the American government, and every government in the coalition can be faulted for uh, insufficient political analysis and as a result insufficient pre-planning. How did you find working with, with Paul Bremer? Well, uh, there was an interesting start to our relationship. Uh, um, it was rather like going into the headmaster's study. Uh, I was kept waiting outside. And once I was ad admitted, I had to wait until the paperwork was finished and then um, sat down on a coffee table like this and his Timberland boots were on the table <laughs> and I received a reprimand for something that the British Army had done. And since I had absolutely nothing to do, no responsibility for the British Army at all, and I was well used to sort of management techniques, at least the chair wasn't higher, you know, <laughs> um, I let that, um, I let all that pass. And in fact, very, very quickly we developed a business-like relationship. I said exactly what my objectives were in calling on him. And um, I never had a problem at the personal level at all, personally myself, with him at all. Whenever I had some suggestions to make, he would always listen, not always take the suggestions. But And um, if at a conference I indicated I wanted to speak, he would immediately give the floor to me. So um, that relationship was important. Um, I mean, I could not afford politically or practically for it to be anything else. You do get a lot of uh, spleen vented about Bremer. I mean, one reads a lot of spleen being vented. Yes, one of the people yes, who were yes, part yes. of yeah. the project. Yes. Uh, I mean, do you understand why he seemed to have this effect on some of the officers and some of the other people who, who were working with him at the senior level. I mean, he is portrayed by some as a sort of uh, micro-controlling, megalomaniacal, but in some sense ineffective, uh, paradoxically ineffective personality. I mean, does any of that add, add up for you, reading some of those other accounts? Well, he's a strong personality, and Baghdad and Basra um, were absolutely full of strong personalities. Um, he wouldn't have been in that position if he wasn't. That's why he was chosen. Control freak, so was I, um, but so was Donald Rumsfeld. And uh, Bremer, in his book, complains, I think, justifiably about the 8,000-mile screwdriver. Um, you don't make an omelette without breaking eggs. He had a management style which was not universally popular. The other problem was, I mean, there's some adage, oh, well, it's not an adage, it's a quote which I use in the book by Phil Marshall Slim, the ultimate imperative for a general is to win. And in a way, he was a civilian general, and the operation, the Coalition Provisional Authority, did not win. It was wound up early. It was a failure. And uh, that sort of mud sticks, I think, for all the mistakes that were made, um, to which, you know, to a greater or lesser extent, we were party to, um, he's had a raw deal. Because I think the task he, he was given was possibly in those circumstances not feasible. So therefore I think to some extent he's been used as a state scapegoat. And some of his techniques, which was spend money now, 
don't worry too much about accounting and contracting, I entirely agreed with. And I had similar problems with my government over that as he had with his. Yeah, well, nobody knows where about a third of it went. That's the, I mean, that's the downside, isn't it? You want immediate results, but when the accounting comes to be done, there are these great lacunae in the... Uh, as the accountants would constantly remind us, yes. <laughs>